Did you know that there are some secret tone sliders in Adobe Camera Raw that are literally hidden in plain sight that will help you overcome some of the most difficult lighting challenges in any scenario? Probably not. That's why you're watching this video. So let's dive in. I'm going to show you these things. These are three images that are rather challenging. And as you look at these, you can probably tell what the most challenging issues are in these. Now, this one here doesn't seem like it's going to be that much of a challenge, but look at all these highlights here that are really blown out and are very, very bright. Look at this image where we have extreme dark conditions with extreme light conditions. Uh, photographing waterfalls in midday light can be very difficult if you don't have overcast skies. This is proving that. And then we have this image here where we have darkness in the foreground and these clouds that we don't want to destroy in the background. So these sliders that I'm going to show you will help you recover highlights in just about any one of these scenarios. Where are these sliders hidden? It's not in your light section, not in your color section. It's here in your color grading section. Now I have my color grading section at the very bottom because when I right click on this, you can say edit panels to show. I like to have color grading at the bottom because it's a constant reminder that what happens at the color grading level is ha actually happening at the top of everything in your raw edits. And most people don't think that editing in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom has any layered type of workflow, but it certainly does. And we'll talk about that as well. So let's take a look at this. If I just go ahead and pop the auto button on here and take a look at this, I still feel like my highlights are very bright in this image. So if I come down here and try to reduce those highlights, they're still very bright in this image. If I open up these shadows to try and get some of the uh, shadows to be resurrected from there, I still have these very bright highlights. So one might be inclined to go to the curve. Uh, to cut some of those highlights. And you could definitely do that by coming here and cutting those highlights and shadows just a little bit more with the curve. Uh, but I like to use the curve for other things. So if I use that curve here, I'd have to use curves and masking. That's where these sliders in the color grading section, these secret sliders that I'm telling you about for your tonal adjustments will really come in handy. Now we're not really paying attention here to the circles. Okay. What we want is these sliders underneath the circles. These are actually your tonal adjustments that are within your midtones, your highlights, or your shadows. So if these highlights are still rather strong, I can come over to the highlight section here and just drop that down. And you start to see that it cuts through all of that really bright highlight that's happening in my image. I can also do the same thing with my midtones. I can cut my midtones down and that really helps cut, take the edge off of some of that brightness that I'm getting from this image, which will make this a little bit easier to edit as I go forward. It looks like I have a really dark image, but if I come back up to my lights, I can increase that exposure a little bit. And if we turn off the color grading, you can see that brightness is just cut through. Now there are instances where you want that brightness, but in a tricky image like this, you're not going to want that. I would then take this into Photoshop and process this further with this as a really good baseline for me. Let's take a look at this cloud image in this cloud image here. I'm going to go ahead and press the auto button and you'll see that these clouds get really bright very bright, almost to the point of distracting bright. Well, if I come down to my color grading section, I go over to the highlight slider and I just move this down. I can start cutting through a little bit of that excess highlight that I'm getting in my image as I increase all of those adjustments in my light section. And again, with my midtones, I could either cut those down too, if those are too strong in some of those highlight areas or bring them up over here. Now we do have these sliders here called blending and balance. Balance, if we move this to the left, that will essentially favor the shadow areas for the effects that we're getting here and basically cut out what we just did. So if we go to the right, it will favor those highlight areas and ensure that what we are doing in these sliders here is affecting those highlight areas more so than those shadow areas. Now with blending, this is about the transition between those tonal elements to basically increase or decrease the feather between them. So we can blend them a little bit more in that way as well. Now, when I close the color grading section here and go to my light section, I get even more access to these tonal adjustments here. And I don't have that brightness that was essentially making it very difficult for us to connect with the image. Now, one of the things that we also have to recognize here is the idea of profiles. The profile that we use here is going to be the baseline for all of our tonal adjustments. And you'll see here that I'm using a camera neutral profile. And over here, I was using Adobe Color. So what's the difference between Adobe Color and the camera neutral profile? Well, what I like about the camera neutral profile is it tends to not increase the color and also not make those highlights so bright. If I were to change this to the Adobe Color profile, you'll see here that these highlights get a little bit more intense and so does our color. I actually prefer camera neutral in most cases 
especially for tricky images like this. Now let's take a look at an image like this and I'll show you kind of the, the way that you're going to pivot left and right with this and even compare this to something like a linear profile for individuals who like linear profiles, but feel like, you know, they just dabble with them every once in a while when they need them, you are going to love this trick. If by chance though, you are a linear profile lover, everything I say from here on out, you are not going to agree with, and you're probably going to bully me in the comments and that's completely okay. I, I get that, but watch this. For this image, I need to increase my shadows because they are way too dark and decrease my highlights. So let's do the typical auto button to see what that does. Now that does allow me to get into this space a little bit more, but I'm going to need to drop those highlights even more than they already are and possibly increase those shadows a little bit more than they already are. Now for this one, we're using the Adobe color profile here, but let's go to our color grading section here and drop those midtones down a little bit and then drop those highlights down a little bit. Look at the amount of recovery that we have here in those highlight areas. Now, big blowout areas like this one right here, we're still gonna have a problem with those because that data is just collected in pure white. But it looked like this data back here was pure white, didn't it? Until we turned on those color grading sliders and saw that we could add and force some mid-tone in here. So what exactly is happening? Let's take a look up at our histogram. And when you, I move the highlights to the left and to the right, you can see that it just basically grabs the, the histogram and just forces all of the highest highlight to become more gray. In the HDR days, what would happen in this highlight area with tone compression is that this would basically turn like a muddy gray. What I like about this is it's not like the HDR days. I feel like there's some protection measures that are happening here with those highlights to ensure that they don't turn gray. Now there's many things I can do in Photoshop to recover this and I'm happy with where I am now. Now this is at the Adobe color profile. Let's change this to the camera neutral profile. With the camera neutral profile, you'll see that it just cuts a lot of that really vibrant color and also helps me a little bit with those highlights and those shadows. Now, I think this would be a great place for me to jump off into Photoshop and continue to explore the tonal values in my image. But look at what's happening with this color grade. I'm getting a lot more uh, detail and data that is available in those highlight areas that don't come out so bright and offensive in a way. So now let's compare and contrast this to something like using a linear profile for those who are familiar with the linear profile. Now, those of you who don't know what a linear profile is, this is something that you would have to custom make. It's essentially a profile that you will create to neutralize the contrast in your raw files. Every camera manufacturer introduces some type of contrast into your raw files to make them more beautiful as soon as you pull them into Photoshop. But some people don't like that. So they use what's called a linear profile where they neutralize the contrast completely in their image. So I'm gonna make a series of snapshots here. This snapshot is going to be no linear, okay? That's just for me to know that this isn't the linear profile. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna reset everything to what it was like when it was open. And I already have my Sony A1 linear profile here. You can see the benefits of using a linear profile as it really does help cut some of those highlights there. And if I go into the light section here and I'll just press auto to get this started, doesn't usually work out that well. I can drop those highlights here, increase those shadows here, and then maybe increase the exposure a little bit. And you can see now that I'm almost at the state of where I was with the linear profile. Now, even with my nonlinear effects, I still have some brightness throughout the image. But one of the things that I don't like about linear profiles is that because you're changing the raw file so much, all of the sliders in your light section will not move in a predictable manner. Now, of course, you still have access to your color grading here as well when you're in a linear profile. So for those really tricky images, you can get access to some really wonderful tonal modifications from this color grading section, even with a linear profile. But what I enjoy about this is that because we are using a faux linear profile kind of process, my profiles here are not jammed up by only being able to use a linear profile. I can change this now to any profile that I might want to use in this image while still ensuring that my highlights are not too blown out. This is mainly something that is used for highlight control, but you can also move your shadows adjustments here. Okay, so if I move my shadows, you can see I can make a really flat kind of image. Now, when I'm processing my photos, this is essentially how I get my raw process to look. I want a flat image, and then I bring it into Photoshop, and I can explore and exploit all of my tonal data in Photoshop in a much better manner. Just so we're all on the same page, this is not intended 
to look like a finished image. Okay. This is about getting more access to those difficult and tricky tonal areas that will literally make you feel like you're chasing your tail to correct. This image started out as an incredibly difficult image to process. I remember when I first started processing this one, I was like, man, I really like it, but I can't do anything with this because there's just so much contrast in here. Well, now all that contrast is open and I didn't even do our traditional HDR process to get this done. No fancy tricks, just using these hidden sliders to gain access to uh, tonal values that are normally very difficult to process. So let's go back on this concept of why is color grading at the bottom? Okay. And what does that matter? Well, a lot of people don't think that Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom works in a layered fashion like Photoshop. And what I mean by that is when you modify something here, the next thing doesn't just go on top with the other data recorded at the bottom. A lot of people think that when you're editing at the raw level, it's a linear process, meaning everything's happening at the same time. Therefore, this doesn't affect that. I've proved this in many ways that that is not true, but here's another way that I can prove that. If I were to change this to black and white. Okay, so now we've changed this to a black and white image. If I go into the mixer here, I don't have access to color anymore. If I go to calibration, I can move the calibration and guess what? I cannot modify the color in this image using these color sliders. Essentially what's happening here is the profile is changing to Adobe monochrome, which supposedly rests at the top of the stack of edits, but watch color grading. This is how we know that color grading happens on top of everything. If I were to go into the midtones and just make them magenta, you'll see that this is the only color modifier in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom that will allow you to change the color even of a black and white image that's been changed with a profile. So why do I share that with you? I share that with you because it's incredibly important to know. I'm going to reset this and then change this away from black and white. It's incredibly important to know that because when we make this modification where the highlights go down like this, this portion of the histogram is forever going to be pegged right here. So you cannot get any more brightness than what is available here at the raw level. If we were to do this to the shadows, we cannot get our shadows to get any darker than what they are right here because this color grading is going to rest on top. Now that doesn't mean that as we move these, it's not going to get darker. It certainly is going to get darker but look at how it's getting darker on the histogram. It's stopping right here. This is essentially creating a governor for you to make, ensure that you don't go too dark or too light with your image. So you need to know that this color grading secret tonal sliders are essentially like a governor that you can say, Hey, highlights never get brighter than this. And they will never get brighter than that at the raw level. Of course, like I said about this spot here, if you have tricky highlight areas, that are blown out in the data that you recorded, there's not much that you're going to be able to do there. But what I enjoy about this is that it doesn't create tone compression there that feels like old school HDR tone compression. You know exactly what I'm talking about if you ever did that stuff. By no means am I trying to replace your linear profile process. If you're a linear profile person, I'm just trying to expand and open up some of your processing knowledge so that you can attack some of those tricky tonal areas with sliders that you may have not known existed for this process. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your workflow today.